Hey guys, welcome back to another Sonic Universe comic review. Today I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite arcs so far in Sonic Universe, and that is the Tales Adventure Saga. I'm looking at this one because it focuses on one of my favorite characters in the franchise, Tails, and his portrayal in this arc is actually really good. You'll see why once we begin. Then I'll be looking at the Treasure Team Tango Saga, and then the Knuckles Saga. As for the Journey to the East arc, I don't ever plan on reviewing that, nor will I have any interest in reading it, because it takes place during a storyline that occurred in the main comic series, with so many weird looking characters appearing and all that stuff that I never read from the main issues, so yeah, not going to cover them. So yes, I am reviewing the Tales Adventure arc because it is in my top 4 favorite Sonic Universe arcs, along with Treasure Team Tango, Knuckles Returns, and of course the Shadow Saga which I have covered already, so be sure to check out my videos on those if you haven't already. So as stated earlier, this saga centers around Sonic's well-known sidekick, Miles Tails Prower, as well as it being loosely based on Tails Adventure for the Game Gear. I have actually played it through the Nintendo 3DS's Virtual Console and I thought it was pretty good. I'll get into more on that later on in this video. But let's just go on and get started on this review. Cover for this issue is pretty basic and similar to issue 9's cover, as it shows Tails pointing at us and also featuring some detailed clouds, and a small island on the bottom which almost looks like the one that is going to be the main setting of this arc. The story begins with Tails, alongside Antoine and Bunny, driving on board in a sea fox while on their way to Coco Island for the latter Tuesday. As they are headed there, Tails apologizes to Bunny that there isn't enough room for her in the sea fox since it's designed to be a one-seater. I mean, you already have seats attached to your sea fox for both of them so it's really not that big of a deal. Anyway, Bunny reassures him that she's glad he's bringing them to the island to have a nice time together. Tails says that it's a pleasure that he's doing this for them after the things that they have been through lately, mostly relating to the shit that happened from the destruction of Knothole to the Iron Dominion in which the previous arc had taken place. Bunny also suggests that Tails could use some free time as well, since he was involved in that aforementioned saga. He then finally arrive at Coco Island, but Tails notices something rather unusual about it. His map shows that there, that there are only two islands here, yet the third one isn't shown. Antoine states that Tails probably hasn't gotten around to it yet, but Tails still seems doubtful about the fact that he might have overlooked the whole place and has been too focused on it. But despite that, they decide to reach the island anyway in hopes of earning their relaxation. During this, a mysterious figure is watching them via a telescope, and it turns out that two Mobian birds are spotting the heroes as they wonder why they're even there in the first place, as they'd always made sure nobody should be aware of the island. They then start coming up with a shitload of plans to ambush them, until a third bird appears before them, saying that the two should stay there and observe what the heroes are doing. Meanwhile on the beach, Bunny wonders if Tails would be fine if he's alone, and Tails replies by saying that he's got plenty of pet projects to work on in his workshop, and Antoine and Bunny say that they will both be fine on their little honeymoon date. As Tails departs to visit his workshop, he reflects on how he first came to the island after his trip from Down Under to have his own little home that he built himself, hence his workshop. Like the comic tells us, the readers, all of that had taken place in the Tails miniseries, and that was before he decided to take a lot of time off here, where Sonic seemingly got killed, although in reality he actually got transported into space during one of the devastating attacks on Mobius and that he was getting to know this island, and how the workshop was the only thing where he could reside in, so that it would help him during dark times. He also reveals that he never told anyone about the place, fearing that they wouldn't allow him to return there due to the fact that he was still a kid, but now he believes that his friends will claim him as a true freedom fighter. Now, this part in the story was where I began to like Tails even more so than back in the older issues of the main comic series, where he was always seen as a younger member of the Freedom Fighting crew. While he sometimes was able to help out the team and kick ass, he was always relegated to Sonic's sidekick who couldn't really do much of anything and would sometimes get a funny kiss from Sally, but here he actually has encouragement for himself. Back in the control room, the, the birds are surprised as hell as they, look, as they look at the way Tails is flying, questioning how it can even do that. The third bird immediately states that the only Mobians meant to enjoy the skies are birds. Hmm, then I guess you've never seen a bat, a bee, or a flying squirrel. Those are Mobians who can also fly besides you, dumbass. Anyways, we get a brief little two-page montage of the good guys time on the island. 
Antoine and Bunny are shown to be setting up their own tent, while Tails creates his very robot pet named T-Pup, who kind of reminds me of Gutter from Jimmy Neutron. Later during the sunset, Antoine and Bunny are sitting by each other during the campfire, as Antoine wonders if they got married too early. Bunny then takes a playful offense at him, asking something like that, causing the for former to be flustered a little. She also states that people would say that they might have rushed into their marriage before the Great War had happened, but she points out that this isn't like the old days, as they've been fighting this rebellion since they were younger and are now grown up. Then Antoine wholeheartedly agrees, and just wanted to make sure that she was content with the way things are. They continue their honeymoon together, while a few mysterious characters land on their boats, not too far down on the beach. All of a sudden, an explosion occurs, waking Tails from his sleep who looks out the window to see what happened. He then realizes that he and T-Pup need to find his friends. The couple notice this as well, realizing an, an un unexpected attack was omitted. Antoine tries to come up with a plan to escape by asking Bunny if she can extend her legs long enough to escape out in the ocean, but unfortunately she is not able to do that, let alone fly through here with so much smoke around. They resort to looking for Tails and getting the Sea Fox, but they are stopped by some new bad guys. Having no other choice to flee from them, they decide to go on the offense and start kicking some ass. Tails tries to hurry on to the scene with T-Pup tagging along, only to be ambushed by these battle birds as well. They attack him with flamethrowers, but Tails effortlessly dodges them. He once again reflects on how he had his previous adventures in the past, where he needed to be rescued from a threat. But that was then, and this is now, as he pierces through a bird's mech, then quickly takes care of the rest of them. But he unfortunately gets surpassed by the green bird from before, who is flying incredibly fast, as he immediately overwhelms the fox. Back on the beach, the couple still manage to hold their own against the battle birds until a large mech emerges from the fire. Antoine fires at it with a laser pistol, while Bunny tries to shield herself and him from the mech's attacks. Then the mech launches out a fist attack, punching the shit out of them which knocks them out. The other battle birds approach the unconscious heroes and take them prisoner. Meanwhile, Tails is still fighting the green guy and tries to ask him what his deal is or if he's part of the Dark Egg Legion or some sort of mercenary group, but the bird chooses not to answer him. The green dude then flies up to do a draw kick move on Tails, sending him all the way to the ground. He finally decides to introduce himself, telling him that he is speedy from the Battle Bird Armada and that he will be at the hero's end. And thus, the story concludes here. And now it's time I give my overall thoughts on this issue's story. This issue's story was surprisingly really good. Besides it being based on the Tales Adventure Game Gear game, I, di I kinda didn't expect much of it to be really interesting when I read it through the graphic novel, but somehow it really was. As for the Game Gear game, I mentioned in the beginning that I had played it on the Nintendo 3DS's Virtual Console, and it's actually a pretty solid game, and I recently finished the game for the first time not too long ago. It's a 2D platformer that plays very different from any other traditional Sonic game, where it sees Tails use a variety of items, such as bomb-type weapons, a hammer, speed boots that let him go faster, a remote robot who T-Pup is based off of, and there are even some items that are inspired by Sonic and Knuckles, which are really cool. Well, mostly the Sonic one. The Knuckles one is kinda shit. I'll save my complete thoughts on the game in the Issue 20 review video, but now let's talk about the main antagonists of the story. If you had played Tails Adventure before, you may already know that these are also the main enemies from that game as they are here, along with Speedy himself. They're all a part of the Mobian army, the Battle Bird Armada, led by a man named Battle Cuckoo XB, who appears in the next issue. And this issue is actually the first time we're introduced to these guys in any Archie Sonic series. I really like Speedy's design in this series, seeing as how he looks more modernized and even has goggles just like Eggman. Whereas his game counterpart's design sort of looks a little bland and his fingers appear to be... somewhat longer? The designs of the battle birds look pretty good as well in comparison to how they originally looked in Tales of Venture. Now the next interesting thing to point out in this story is their reaction to Tails flying. Yep, that's definitely the same reaction that most people and most Sonic fans had because how is Tails even able to fly at all by spinning his own tails? Hell if I know. Also, how were they getting footage from Tails from that angle? Was there was there another telescope camera placed somewhere that wasn't shown? That's never explained. 
Another great thing to point out in this is Antoine and Bunny's relationship. Back when I was a 5th grader reading the early to mid 90s Archie Sonic comics, I always found these two to be very entertaining characters. Mainly because of the way they speak and, the, and how they can handle dangerous situations on their own. It took me a couple of years to understand what Anton was fully saying until I realized he was actually speaking in a French accent. And as for Bunny, I can't tell what accents she's speaking in, but goodness. To this day, I will never find her dialogue so goddamn funny. Because for example, she says things like, I knew what you meant, and but mine's better. Seriously, why the hell does she talk like that? That's so weird, it's so cowboyish like. But anyway, on to the actual point of the topic. So these two apparently got married at some point during the main comic series, and I can only assume that they actually did in issue 173, where he proposed to her and she actually accepted his request. It's interesting how this was hinted back in issue 23, where he was shown to have feelings for Bunny for the first time. And another fact about this is that they never had a chance of celebrating their honeymoon dates until now, mainly because of the destruction of Not Hill Village at the hands of Eggman, the, re the relocation of Mobotropolis, Enderjax from the Knuckles comic series Rampage, the invasion of the Egg Dome, and then the conflict of the Iron Dominion, all of which that had happened from issues 175 to issue 212, and that is the span of 38 issues. And if we take Sonic Universe into account, and not counting the 30 years later arc, then this is a span of 12 issues. So it's a really good thing that Tails actually gave them a chance to have their own honeymoon date after all the crap that they've been through since they got married. Well, that is until they got ambushed by the Battlebirds. And now the last highlight in this story that I want to mention is Tails himself. I have already stated in the beginning that Tails is one of my favorite characters in the Sonic franchise. He's got good personality and characterization ever since his debut in Sonic 2. And in games like Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2, we've seen it able to stand up to threats like Chaos 4 and fought against Eggman and his Eggwalkers. And in games like Sonic Heroes, he actually tagged along to help stop a new threat. But by Sonic Unleashed, he slowly starts to regress as a side character and really didn't do much besides being a navigator. And most Sonic fans would always point out that in Sonic Forces, he sees Chaos coming towards him and he literally cowers in fear like a little bitch. Yeah, I agree that cutscene was really stupid. But the reason I brought all of that up is because Tails never fears anything in this issue as well as the entire arc. He actually had guts to kick ass and even defending himself against Speedy. And he even reflects on how he, he couldn't defend himself back then but now he can do so. You see, this is the Tails that I want to see in the future Sonic games. Not the same one from Forces who literally just cowers in fear for no reason and cannot fight back. I really want to see this Tails kicking some butt. As for his Sea Fox, it was built by Rotor in the Sonic Triple Trouble special issue where Tails wanted to use it, but due to Princess Sally's orders, he wasn't allowed to use it, but however, he see the Seagull who conveniently got drenched in oil, which Tails used to operate the Sea Fox. And this is the first time since Sonic Super Special Issue 6, which is a remake of Issue 50 by the way, that he starts using it. He did use it in only two games, which are of course Sonic Triple Trouble and Tails Adventure. I kind of wonder why this was never brought back. I'd like to see it come back in a future Sonic game, but knowing Sega, probably not going to happen. So for this issue, I am giving it a 9 out of 10. In my opinion, this is probably one of the best issues of Sonic Universe, tied with issue 4, issue 12, and issue 23. This one had a great introduction to the characters from Tales Adventure so far, the comic does a great job mentioning the issues where the situations have happened in, some good moments between Antoine and Bunny, Tails actually kicking some ass, and the new designs of the Tales Adventure antagonists. And with it being an adaption of the Game Gear game, this is already starting to get good. The writer, Ian Flynn, has done such an outstanding job with this story, Tracy Yardley and Ben Hunseeker for the cover and penciling, and Jim Amash and Jason Jensen for the inks and coloring respectively. So now, this all concludes this review of Sonic Universe Issue 17. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notification bell so that way you can see a new video from my channel right away when it gets published. If there's anything that I didn't point out in this review, feel free to let me know in the comment section below because I would love to know. No need to be shy to do so. Next review will be issue 18 
and that's where things will get even more interesting from that point on. So that'll be it for this video. I hope you all are having a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time in my next video. So peace out, take care, and stay safe.